My name is Byron Wiley and I am a music teacher in Northern California at Reading School of the Arts and I also am a maker of marimbas, tuner of xylophones and marimbas. I got into that 14 years ago. The school that I was at didn't have any instruments at all so it kind of fell to me if I wanted them I had to go after that so I went to some workshops. Anyway here I am 14 years later with a passion to make instruments and get yours in tune. So that's what I want to talk about today. So here's a xylophone bar. This is a C-sharp and I want to just go through the process just so that if you wanted to, you could take a look at your own bars and see if they're out of tune, which pretty much I can tell you they will be unless you've had them tuned and show you what you can do about that. Um, just the, the quickest thing about tuning or out of tune instruments, why they go out of tune. Most music teachers that I've run across feel like these bars, if they're made well, they should stay in tune. And the truth about it is when they were manufactured, they had about 11% um, 11 cent, 11 moisture in the, in the wood because that's what kiln dried uh, wood generally is. What they stabilize at is more like 7%, 6 or 7% if you look up the charts on that. So what that means is it loses moisture even after the process of tuning. Well that losing of moisture is going to make the marimba bar or xylophone bar in this case, it's going to make it more brittle and the brittleness translates to a higher pitch. So if you check your xylophone bars out against any tuner, whether it's a chromatic tuner, guitar tuner, it doesn't have to be the same one that I have here, a big stroke tuner. You can just check it with any tuner and you'll find, yes, in fact, all of them, I would guarantee you nearly all of them are going to be sharp, somewhere between 10 cents and up to maybe even 40 and 50 cents sharp, which to me is kind of a horrific situation. You want your instruments in tune. So um, here's, here's the process in a nutshell. Here's the C-sharp. And I have a strobe tuner here. You don't have to have a strobe tuner like this, um, but you do have to have something that isolates the pitch. So some guitar, you know, uh, uh, some chromatic tuners, you can actually dial it into the note. Um, the reason for that dialing, that the dialing in is so important, if you just have a guitar tuner that will pick up and tell you what, your, what frequency it's hearing, in a room where you have shop equipment going on, when I get this belt sander going, any other fans that are going on, it'll pick up all those sounds as well. So while you're trying to tune for this, it'll pick up that pitch and the harmonics of this pitch and it'll, you'll see F sharp, C sharp, oh, G sharp. You'll see all kinds of things on your guitar tuner. It'll drive you crazy. So this right here, you can just dial it in. Here it is, C sharp. And this right here, this dial, you set that at zero to see if it's actually perfectly in tune. So I'll check this one here. Here's C sharp. And if you can see those little squares, I guess technically rectangles, that are rolling to the right, okay, you can see that, you see that, they're rolling to the right. If it was in tune, they would just be completely stable. So what I'll do is I'll roll this to the right, since it's sharp, this is saying, yep, it's sharp. How sharp is it? And I think it's somewhere around five cents. Let me just try that. So I don't know if you can make that out, but I just rolled, dialed that to five. And now when I hit this, see how those are stable right there? Okay, so five cents is actually acceptable. Companies, when they tune them, they tune it within three cents. So five cents isn't a big deal. What is a big deal is 15, 20, 30. So I'm not going to retune this bar right now. Uh, and for the purposes of our demonstration, mostly what I want to do is talk you through the process. So what I would do with, to go after that five cents is I would come up here and I would just very lightly touch it at the top there. It wouldn't take much. It's not like you're taking out a chunk, huge chunks of wood here. Just touch it to it and then come back and check. And if I'd removed any wood at all, it'll start dropping that. You'll actually see that the rolling that I mentioned, it'll stop rolling as much. And you'll get it to the point where when it's set at zero, that those, that geometric pattern of those uh, rolling uh, squ <laughs> black, and, black and red pattern, that it stops rolling and it's just stable. And that means you're in tune. Now, one other quick side note, you're not going to just tune the primary or the fundamental pitch, you're also going to be tuning for what's called the second partial, which is this right here. If you hear how oh, that's two octaves, you might not know it was two octaves, but that's going to be around two octaves higher. So that's a C sharp, two octaves above the, the primary. And the place where you'd remove wood to tune that is going to be out here on this, I don't know what they call it, saddle, the end, outer part here. That's where you're going to be taking wood to get that part out. So I'd come up here. And just remove a little bit here and I tune that second partial first just to get that in tune um, by checking again against this. Let's see what it says about that partial. 
you can see now maybe on the dial there. There, that one's way sharp at 50 cents sharp. So that one I would have to go after and I'd take as, as much wood as I could here without taking wood in the center. Since the center is almost in tune, I'd really focus on this area out here to try to bring that down, hoping that in the process I don't lower the fundamental. So the more I take it just out of this range here, the less it will impact the fundamental. It's a lot of information I know, but I just wanted to mostly let you know today that you can tune your xylophones you owe it to your classroom and yourself to make sure that they are in tune. So if you have uh, other uh, questions about that, please email me on this link up on this uh, YouTube post. I'm going to also put a link so you can get a hold of me for more information. Thank you.